Right, we're both recording. Um, so I'm really happy to be back with my matey e. Bryce and for our second short coffee chat, so our shorter video things. And we're actually going to be speaking straight after this with one of my other friends, Arunas, on our passion series. So before we get stuck in to what we're going to be talking about today, Bryce, how are you doing? I'm good. It's early here over in Georgia, and it's so fun because I get to see you today with the sun outs in England. Normally, when we're filming, it's dark for you because of the oh, time yeah. change. So you look very it's lovely, beautiful. very light. It's just such a lovely day here. I went for because I'm working all this afternoon and all the evening. I went for a lovely two hour walk with my dogs, and it was just so beautiful. And the temperature's lovely, and the bulbs are starting to come up. And I think we might have a cold spell coming, but spring really feels in the air, even though it's only February. So today we are going to be starting a little series of sort of kicking off some of our coffee chats with our really good friend Liz, who has got her Etsy shop on the T-shirt, and we've had Liz on our passion series as well. Um, and you and I, we love wearing clothes. I haven't got mine on at the moment because mine hasn't come, but do you want to stand up and model for us? And um, Catherine, you surprised me with this shirt. The more yeah. I learn, the less I know. I got you and Liz, but so I'll have to tell you guys, the mail in Atlanta gets a little tricky sometimes. <laughs> we have some issues with our post office here, but both you and Liz in this week have sent me a, that message, like, girl, go check your mailbox. And I was so excited to get this shirt. Of course, I got that we are all just walking each other home shirt before, but this is literally, I feel like this is the theme for this time in our history, you know? Um so Liz is amazing. Um, Bryce, do you just want to pull up her? Are you able to pull up her details just so we can yes. show the list? And of course, we'll both be putting it below the videos. But the Liz Olive show, this is um, Liz on YouTube. Right. And of course, if you go to her on YouTube, we'll put all her links below. She's obviously got her link to her Etsy shop there as well, which is amazing. And this T-shirt, if it's not already on there, will be on there um, because she's just about to add it in. So that one there, the lovely purple t um, vest there, is the one we're going to be talking about next week. We're all just walking each other home. I've ordered a few of these, but because they're going to the UK, obviously they're taking a little bit more time. Um, she's so talented. She's so know. talented. We have the Charlie Ward shirt here that's very popular. Um, it's all a pantomime. And, and these sketches she does, I believe. Right, Catherine? She does these sketches. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. So when I wanted something special for Bryce's birthday, I was like, oh, this is a, this phrase that Bryce and I are always using together. You know, the more I learn, the less I know. And so she came up with a choice of designs. We had such things. So she's going to add this onto the shop. But I, so within the next few days, it will be on there. So if you like it, guys, you can order it. And also, she is quite open. Like for me in the UK, I wear long sleeve T-shirts. So she's going to put some long sleeve T-shirts on there as well. So don't be shy about if there's something that you want. It's always worth contacting Liz because she's so creative and really developing her shop all the time. And you can get me right here. Contact shop owner. Like it's so easy to get in touch so with her. Easy. And, and Liz, she, Liz she is literally. It. Yeah, she, and she is literally one of the kindest human beings that you will ever meet. So um she's and she's you know and as a, as a business as a small business owner i'm sure she wants to get feedback from people you know the fact that she lives close to me so the fact that we might not think about the fact that someone in the uk or in a colder climate might prefer a long sleeve t-shirt so don't be afraid to reach out to her because we as a business owner you need to understand you, she probably wants that you know like oh that's awesome cool idea let me do that so yeah so um, but the reason we, Bryce and I, love um, wearing things, I've got my boring plain one on today because mine haven't arrived and I didn't want to have another conflicting one on. But we love wearing clothes that sort of sums up our energy, our thoughts, where we're at, don't we? Why is that quite important to you, Bryce? You know, it's so funny. <laughs> so there's this great, I'll link it in my description box below. There's this great video that Richard Freeman did a while ago called Yoga Ruins Your Life. And one of the points he brought up is that your sense of fashion goes out the door when you're used to wearing comfortable clothes and being able to move your body. And I literally have gone years without wearing jeans, blue jeans, because I only wear them when I have to now because I realized I when you wear clothes that are comfortable, you, you are better as a person, you know, when you wear something that you feel good in, you feel comfortable in, you can move in, your behavior is better. You know, I think about all um, when I worked in like, you know, a normal job and having to wear high heels every day, 
like how miserable I was. And, and that's the thing about clothing and shirts and being able to express yourself in a more comfortable um, cocoon for the day, then you behave better and you actually become more attractive. Even if it looks like you're just wearing a t-shirt, if your energy is up, you are more, you have more of a magnetism with other people. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Oh, <laughs> completely. And you know, we're all energy. We talk about vibration a lot on these shows and things. And it's something that's really, really important to me. Mm -hmm. And when I put something on, most of my friends know me, I've always got um, a slogan with a t-shirt on, like my favorite at the moment is be the person your dog wants you to be, or the, the be the person your dog thinks you are. And I just, that to me is a, a, a visible reminder every day of like to be better than I was yesterday. And for that, that sums up everything about if we were all the po people that our animals want us to be, the world would be a great place. So mm -hmm. sometimes embodying it, not only is it infusing yourself with that energy, but it's also putting it back out there for everyone else, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And I, this quote that we we're talking about, the more I learn, the less I know. Now, we, before we were filming, I was like, basically, we've found out that we don't know anything. Like, we yeah. really don't know anything. And that's so, that keeps you in a place of humility. And when you're in that place of humility, you're, you're open to learning and to growing and expanding within yourself. Um, I, there was a funny meme that was going around a long time ago that I just cracked up. It was like, you know, before, before you think you're something special, remember there was a point in your life where you were just trying not to shit your pants. You know, like you always have to come down to that, that place of humility. Um, and when we're at that place of humility and we're, at, we're actually in a kind of a, a vulnerability in a positive way, then I think humanity will be far greater because we realize we need each other. I think that's so, so important. And, you know, the reason I love that saying so much is, you know, coming from a very scientific background and still having a lot of friends that are, are very much in that arena, I think it, it it's combining all of them. You know, we get, we've, we get to a stage often where people say, oh, the academics are the least awake and these people are this, and it's just more labels. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Every single person is complex. And, and if you're like me, you can go through loads of different phases in one day even. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been called being a woman. Um, yeah. But I think it's really important to sort of stop dropping the labels and opening up discussions. And you and I were saying one of the things we love most about Liz's work and her design is it's very non-political. Yeah. You can This can mean you can both be wearing the same set thing and it can mean different things to different people. It opens up a discussion. And isn't that what we're trying to do in this day yes. and age? Open up a genuine discussion and really listening to both points of view. Make conversations great again. Bring back debate. That's, Bring that's back, you know... Thing. <laughs> that's where we we uh we are at that point in our and I, i've said it before with you Catherine. i mean i was born in 1983 so i feel like I'm, i was like the last generation to actually have like a proper childhood because we didn't have the internet you know we had to actually go to the library and we had debate we had to debate and we had we were assigned which side of a topic we were going to take and so if it was you had to go and research even if it was a point of view you didn't inherently agree with you had to then go research the other side's perspective and if we come back to that idea of having conversations, that's why I love the round table so much that we do, because you get to hear, even though a lot of us on the round table are coming from the same uh, point of view, but there's also different perspectives of that point of view. And you, exactly. if, if you can listen into what it opens up this world of possibility for you as well, you know, it, it, it makes you limitless when you're willing to hear what the other person has to say. You know, and I remember my sister, this was a while ago. This was right when the whole fiasco of 2020 started globally. We'll say you guys know what we're talking about. The, you know, the, that thing that, that they said is bad. Um, and my sister is like, yes, this, <laughs> my sister, the, the beer, the beer bug, you know, she's like us. She didn't see the big deal about, you know, what was going on and why um, schools were closing down, all that kind of stuff. Cause she's got young kids and um, she ended up pulling her kids and putting them in a private school. So they didn't have to all day. Well, my nephew's best friend's mother, um, my sister said something amazing one day to me. I thought was so compassionate. She had been on the phone with uh, her son's best friend's mother. And she said, I realized talking to her that people are actually afraid. Yeah. And I felt compassion for her because, and, and when my sister said that, I was like, that was so 
mature of her spiritually to, to even though there's frustration with people who are falling into the, the, the story, um, but to actually listen to someone and realize that this woman was terrified. Yeah. Scared to send her kids to school because she had, she believed that, and to have that compassion, not for believing the story, but for feeling that fear. And that's kind of, I think, what in a way what what we want is to be able to understand where other people are coming from so that we can come to a place of compassion versus judgment if that makes sense yeah oh it really does and and i will admit very strongly that yesterday i well and truly fell off my perch on that one because i was out to lunch with some extended family measures and they were te members and they were telling me about how a lot of their friends still will not go out anywhere, will not let anyone into their house or things like this. And these were quite elderly people. And I really was not able to feel much compassion for that. And then I, because I was like, Jesus, you know, talk about putting yourself into a self-imposed cage after all this time um, and then I really thought deeply about it. And I thought, God, yeah, it's really interesting about how I wasn't able to, in that moment, I was not able to get in there. And, and it opened up a whole conversation in my own head with myself about how complex these situations are, because you're so right. That's so great of your sister to... Um, to show compassion in that situation and to genuinely, genuinely feel it. Cause there's a big difference between genuinely feeling compassion and saying it and not being genuine about it. Yeah. And then also about, um, what am I talking about? Um, not helping people stay in a victim mentality. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's, a, it's such an interesting debate, isn't it? And I must say, you know, sometimes I really don't feel I get that right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's the point of being human, right? Like, yeah. it's so interesting. I recorded uh, part three of the Magdalene series yesterday, and um, and she and she goes through this this in the book of the Gospel of Mary. They, she quotes Jesus, Joshua, saying that there is no such thing as sin; that sin is just you forgetting who you really are. And so you dive deeper into that, and you look at mistakes you make in your what we call, considered like sin mistakes you make, and all they are is like stepping stones for you to reevaluate yourself and learn more about yourself. If that mm -hmm. makes sense, like, of course there's psychopaths, of course there's people that are doing horrible things, but for the average person, you know, when you make that mistake where you judge too quickly or you say something you regret, or you, you didn't act the way you, you wanted yourself to act. It gives in that, that comes up in you. It gives you that opportunity to, to then reevaluate your own self. And that in a, uh, in yoga, we call that pratyahara. It's like self-study. It's the withdrawal of your senses to study your own self. You are your own science experiment at that point. And I think we do. I love that. Be the person you think your dog is, because if we actually went around our day remembering that that was like our mantra, then we would definitely have to like backpedal a little bit and course correct because we are constantly um, not being the person our dog thinks we are or that we want exactly. to be. You know, but that but there's wisdom in like experiencing that downfall within ourselves as well. You know, it's it's um yeah, yeah. But you're so right. And they see the animals see the real you, not what you're trying to falsely per perhaps project into the world. And I'm talking about the royal we, <laughs> not royals, but you know, just uh, just generalizing and things. And it's really fascinating. I've been doing those. Well, I'm currently writing my course at the moment on animal communication because lots of people have said they want to learn in it. And so I'm putting a course together on that. And it's just absolutely just wonderful. I mean, I'm, I'm just loving it because one of the things I was looking at yesterday was do animals feel guilt? Um, and it's really interesting because we know they feel the whole range of emotions that humans have. But one of the things I have noticed is they don't stay in guilt. So they no. might say if they if they nick a bit of food off the table or something say a dog and you say oh naughty girl look what you've done you've taken my dinner they'll sort of they know they've upset you but they let go of it they're not the next day they're not thinking oh I really shouldn't have taken mum's dinner <laughs> you know they've moved on to the next things and I think what I find really brilliant between animals is yes they feel all the emotions and absolutely you know if you've if you've had animals that have had abuse in their life they definitely hold on to things but they don't stay in the lower vibrational emotions and keep beating themselves up like humans have does that make sense it makes perfect sense um yeah and it's funny there's a there's a funny youtube i can't remember the name of the dog this came out years ago but it was something the guilty dog 
and the guy he ate the cat treats and the guy's filming him and he's sitting in the corner like trying to smile yeah. at the cat is so funny but it's and i remember people talking about when you're training an animal or a dog like you know when they do something they're not supposed to do you have to address it right then and there because if you address it later they're they've already released it yes you know? and um yeah, it's, it's for sure. It's, it's, um, even there was a book I, it's actually sitting in my trunk in India. Whenever I'll get back to India, it was written by a psychiatrist about like the, uh, uh fight or flight or freeze response. And it talked a lot about how animals, when they freeze in fear, if, if the predator is left, their nervous system, you'll see them like shake it off literally. And then they, they allow their body to like shake off the fear and then they move on. What happens to us humans is we don't shake it off. We don't allow ourselves to shake it off. And so when you get into like a, a huge influx of trauma and your body, you'll start shaking uncontrollably again. And then you want to stop it. But they're saying, no, allow that to happen because that's what the animals do so that they can release that energy and, and not carry that around within them. All the time, all the time. And I think, you know, this sums up again, going back to, um, the, you know, the, the more I learn, the less I know. As I think it's just being aware to all the time to just be like uh, taking on this new information and trying it out and seeing what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And we can get so hung up particularly in this sort of truth movement about who's right and who's wrong there's lots of conversations at the moment about certain people and are they on the good and are they in the bad and uh, and you're just like oh my goodness you know i know in one respect we're having these conversations and people want to have these debates and it just so happens that a lot of them are having them online but so long as everyone, everyone realizes when they're saying it, it's just their opinion. They right. don't know. They don't know. And time will tell one way right. or the other. Time will tell. It's funny you say that because I was even thinking about, you know, the more I learn, the less I know with like experts, we've been put in this um, society where we, we give all of our power over to who we, who we assume are experts. And I think that as like the YouTubers as well, I think we sometimes get put in that category, but I'm like, I'm just a girl from Georgia. Like exactly. I'm just, I'm just, a, I mean, my opinions throughout this whole two years of being on YouTube, my opinions on, on matters have changed a lot have fluctuated. Yeah. And I've said a lot of time on my channel, the only thing that I can control is my own research. And that's why I like to present my research is so we can talk about it. So I can read the comments and see what other people have to say. And, and that again, goes back to like, yes, you don't have to. And I know this is maybe even a product of where we are, where we think we have to agree with every single thing a person says in order for that person to be aligned with us. And that's just not right. true. It's not true. You know, and, and half the time you might not even agree with your own thoughts six months down the line. So are you not aligned with yourself? You know, and I think that's where this debate is coming. It's like if one person on the platform says something wrong or makes a prediction that doesn't come true, all of a sudden that person is like chast is like put aside as, as bad. And no, we're all just trying to figure it out together. You know, exactly. it's, um, it's so funny. I was going through my, my baby book, um, uh, my, my mother had saved it last night and I found a note that my, I put it on my Twitter. I found a note my mother had left for my dad when I started walking and literally the note said, Bryce takes four steps, sits down, gets back up, takes four, four more steps, sits down. And it's like, and I was reading that. I was like, wow, as an adult, we don't sit back down again. We don't like we, we constantly feel like we have to be moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. But if we, if we move forward, sit down for a minute, let it settle in, just like that toddler learning how to walk, re listen to people, understand people are coming from a different perspective. We don't have to place judgment on them, whether they're good or bad, if that makes sense. Oh, so much so. And it's funny because I was looking at some of the comments, which were really, really good comments. And like you, I love seeing them. But after our round table with Medina and David, and when we were briefly touching on the twin flame stuff, and then I would got a lot of comments. So when I was saying, well, what about this for the twin flame? doesn't mean I do or don't believe in the twin flame. I was just exploring things because mm -hmm. it, it occurred to me over the last couple of weeks, particularly when everyone's speaking about Mercury retrograde and the moon and, you know, all this and that. I was like, well, we're taught about brainwashing. Mm hmm from the deep state um, type things or whatever you want to call it and from mainstream and making us behave and think certain things as the norm. But I want to question it on the other side of things as well, because, for example, my husband doesn't know anything about Mercury retrograde and he never has anything go wrong with his technology. 
or computers around that time. So it's just, it, it's not, a, I think this, <laughs> I think that, but I'm just like, well, we, we talk about attracting into our lives what we think about becomes our reality. And yeah. he's, never had, he's never had one letter about this, even though he's with the same GP as me. I've been talking about this a lot more than him. He's just completely ignored the whole thing. He's never been asked anyway. He's never been asked about this. He's never had. So, like, I'm, I'm just putting it out there to the universe. Well, how do we know Met Mercury retrograde really has all these negative effects? It's a very convenient excuse, and it might have. But it's not affecting people that don't know anything about it in that right. Way. It, ignorance is bliss in that way. Yeah. Well, you know, it's so funny because I I just filmed. I'm not, it's going up on my channel later today with uh with our friend Cindy because we were going through. She's she's into like calling in the planets, and so we did Venus and Jupiter. And then she was saying next week she wants to talk about the moon, and she said something she's funny. She goes, but you know, there's controversy around that. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, because we don't even know if it's real or not. Like you know, it's it's but it's still it's just this this conversation. It's funny. My my perception of twin flames has actually changed since before that like i always knew about the twin flame but i always thought it was like you were on one side of the veil and they were on the other but then i went back and reviewed plato's symposium which i had read a long time ago and i was like oh wait now my opinions changed and so yeah it's just it's like we're all just scrambling trying to figure out what's what but at the end of the day isn't this all just as as the band stick says isn't this all just a grand illusion anyway and we don't need an answer. That's the beauty of it. But to me, I have now reached a stage in my life where I do not need an answer. I love having the conversations. I can't wait for that moon one because for me, with all my herbal medicine, with the animals, so for example, I would always do a herbal dewormer on a full moon because that's meant yeah. to bring the parasites out and yep. to be the most effective. But I was laughing in a conversation the other day because I was like, well, if the moon turns out to be something completely different to what we think it is, then will it really be affecting the parasites in the way I think it is? You know, I don't care. I don't, I don't mind if it's different. It's I just think it's fascinating. It's, to it's find funny. Out. I, I know here, because we don't, you know, with our yoga shala, we signed a contract with our school in India that we closed down on moon day. So we don't open on new moon or full moon. We are supposed to rest that whole day. Um, and I know that like living in a city, if you live in a big city, you can probably ask one of your police officers or, you know, a hospital worker, like what they know the moon schedule because the full moon al always is crazier for them. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is because, you know, in my, at this point where I'm sitting now with the moon, I think we do have a moon, but I don't think what we see is actually that moon. Does that make mm -hmm. Like the sun might not be the, you know, yeah. so, so there's, there's a, yeah, it's that whole like, well, then what is that? The more I learn, the less I know. Yeah, exactly. Like, the more I learned, the less I know. So <laughs> we'd never be having these fun conversations if it was like, right, tick that one off. You've got the answer. Tick that one off. How boring would the world be? Oh, and sure. that's how all the great inventions have been, met, you know, made because it's like you think this is it, and then someone takes it up to the next level and the next level. And actually, a lot of what we're doing is just remembering what people before us have already known anyway and perhaps we've already known in previous lives isn't that the scientist in you though always questioning always questioning always questioning you know yeah. like that uh, scientists are philosophers and philosophers are scientists because it's always questioning always questioning always questioning why 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 you know and, and it's going to see that in our next chat with runas because we've worked together and he'll know how annoying i can be with my questioning <laughs> in real life but it's just fascinating i think i just haven't even though physically i'm 54 now mentally i'm still in that five-year-old stage of why 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 <laughs> so i'm still annoying people now with that but oh my god well you model it so beautifully you really do and um now oh we've got something exciting because yeah Liz, listen, one more time y'all because this shirt like look at that design she did isn't it beautiful it's beautiful and i said this on one of my own videos with the uh, you know, updates for the, my channel, I talked about that this tank top, uh, next level that the brand she's using is a really good tank. We use that a lot of yoga shalas use that for their, their studios. Um, tank tops, it's, they it's a good brand. It's not going to shrink. It's not, it's a really sturdy, good brand. Um, of, so whatever size you are, this is a small, uh, for me is a small. So, you know, if you're a lady and you want it more, coverage in the chest area maybe a medium but this is a small so yeah yeah great brand so we are really excited because liz is giving our listeners 15 percent of anything in the shop on an ongoing basis so we will put the code below but the code is passion 
P-A-S-S-I-O-N. And if you use that coupon code, um, which Bryce and I will be both putting below all our videos you and the link to Liz's shop. And um, we are really, we are passionate about supporting people who are getting off their backside, doing ethical businesses um, and moving forward in the way that we want to. And let's get us all off these big corporates that we don't think we'll know what they're doing. And let's start supporting wonderful people like um, Liz and other people who are really moving the world forward and, and really shaping their own way, aren't they? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're so good about that, Catherine. I have to brag on Catherine because she literally, we, we know a lot of people in our truth or movement who um, have small businesses and you're constantly, constantly supporting people behind the scenes in their small businesses. And I don't think our viewers know that you do that. So I'm going to put that out there because Catherine is truly doing it from a place of humility and compassion and empathy. And she doesn't tell people she's doing that guys, but she's always constantly out there supporting people's businesses. So she's, Aww, she's practicing that. what she's preaching. So <laughs> So, well, thank you. I hope everyone's enjoyed our next coffee chat. I'll have to make myself a nice organic com coffee next time. I've got my lemon juice. And we will be back shortly, won't we, for our yep. next exciting installment. Thank you for watching, everyone. Let us know what you think about this. The more I learn, the less I know. What does that, what does that bring up for you? Have fun. Bye. Bye.